In this video, we'll be going over the basic electrophysics formulas that aren't involved in circuits. Circuits we'll save for a separate video. But for this one, I think it's very important to be able to distinguish all of the major electrophysics formulas and to not get them confused with each other. And so what I've done here is I've set up a chart that will help you be able to derive the major formulas that you need and to understand when they do and don't apply. So the first thing you need to realize is whether you're working with a constant electrical field or whether you're working with two point charges exerting forces on each other or creating an electric field on each other. And so the code words for constant electrical field, they might just say a constant electrical field or they might just give you capital E and tell you what that means or they might say a massively large charged object, or they might have something that has such a large charge that the other things aren't particularly relevant with it. And so those are code words for constant electrical field. The other type of scenario you'll encounter will be point charges, where two charged objects are exerting a force on each other, either an attractive or repulsive force, depending on whether they are opposite charges, which will attract, or the same type of charge that will repel each other. So we've already covered in physics the two major force formulas. One of them is uh, QE, and that's if you have a constant field. And the other one is uh, K, which is your electrical constant. They'll give that to you. You don't have to memorize that for the MCAT. And uh, Q1 times Q2 divided by the distance between them squared. Once you have that, then you can make some simple adjustments to derive all of the other formulas in a fairly intuitive way. So the first thing to realize is what U, what potential electrical energy means in this type of scenario. And the best way to describe electrical potential energy is to imagine if, if this palm is a large charged object and I'm holding an electron in the other hand. So this is positive, this is negative, and, um, I, and these want to be attracted to each other. In order to move them apart, I would have to do a fair bit of work. I would have to fight the electrical force over a certain amount of distance. The interesting thing is that if I were to then release that electron, then it would have that exact amount of work it would be able to perform again. So when you're thinking of electrical potential energy, you can really think of it as the work that was necessary to get that object to where it is when fighting against the electric field. And then if you're to then release that object, it has that much work that it can perform in moving back there. And so remember that to get from force to work, you just multiply by distance. And that's what you do here. To get from force to electrical potential energy, you multiply by distance. And so if it's a constant electrical field, you're just going to be multiplying by distance. It's going to be QED. And if it's um, with a point charge, you're going to multiply that by D. And because you're multiplying by D here, that is going to take the squared out of the denominator. And it's just going to be divided by D rather than D squared. So to get from either of these electrical force formulas, which you should be quite comfortable with, to the potential energy formulas, all you need to do is imagine converting force to work. And so that just means multiply that by D. Now, to get the electrical field by itself, you uh, can already figure out that since this is a constant electrical field, it will just be formulaically represented as E. So to get from here to there, you essentially have to divide by the charge of the object. And so to get from a force formula to an electrical field, what you do is you eliminate the charge of the object from the equation. So here you take this force formula, divide it by Q, which is the charge of the object. Over here with point charges, your job is to figure out which one of them is the subject charge. Because remember that one of these objects is going to exert a force on the other one. And if you want to isolate, so let's just call this Q1 and we'll call this Q2. And if we're wondering what kind of uh, electrical field force one exerts on uh, object one exerts on object two, all we do is get object two out of the way. So we take this formula and we divide that by Q2, the charge of the second object, and that allows us to isolate the force and the field that are being created by object one. So to get from force to electric field, you take the force formula and divide that by the subject charge. So just divide it by Q. Now to get from there to voltage, 
you basically do both of these adjustments. You multiply by distance and then you divide by the subject charge. So you're going to be both multiplying by D and dividing by Q. So to go from QE, you multiply it by D and then you divide it by Q, what you're left with is this electric field times the distance between the objects and that gives you voltage. And to do that over here, you basically divide by Q2 and multiply by D and what you're left with is K times Q1 divided by distance. And so if you are able to see it this way and figure out which framework you're dealing with, constant electrical field or point charges, and if you know the force formulas, it's not going to be hard to derive any of these other formulas. And this saves you a lot of memorization on the MCAT. So to get from force to potential energy, you multiply by distance. To get from force to electric field, you divide this force formula by the subject charge, and you do the same over here. And to get from force to voltage, you do both of those adjustments. Multiply by distance, divide by charge, and you're left with the answers over here. Now the last piece of this is to realize that since we know that voltage equals E times D, we can move this up here and say that the potential energy equals charge times voltage. And that's the last one that you might be responsible for on the MCAT, is realizing that you can express the potential energy in a constant electrical field as Q times V. This comes up a little bit when you're dealing with capacitors, but the bottom line is that if you know these force formulas and you know how to work your way into the other quantities, then you will be so much further ahead of the pack when you're doing electrophysics problems on the MCAT.